Welcome to the introduction to the difference and difference approach using Stata. This is an initiative of MMS Research Hub by John Rivelos. All right, so we're starting now. Contents of the chapter. Applications of the difference and difference, justification for the use of the approach, basic considerations to use the difference and difference approach, and also we're introducing some initial concepts related to the difference and difference approach. These concepts are impact evaluation, the counterfactual, treatment effect, treatment groups, control groups, and average treatment effect. Applications of the difference and difference approach. It's commonly used in impact evaluation relative to the topic of public policy analysis. It's used to measure variations over time and over individuals, which requires time series and cross-sectional data. It focuses in the establishment of effects on a dependent variable derived from the interaction of exogenous variables given a treatment. Variants of the difference and difference method can account to deal with autoselection bias and endogeneity problems. The difference and difference approach is useful to compare the difference between observed outcomes from partial and non-randomized samples in groups. Why the need of difference and difference approach? It helps to measure the treatment effects from control and treatment groups over time. This is especially effective when we're evaluating a public program intervention. Difference and difference approach help to reduce endogeneity problems if heterogeneous effects are time invariant. It also helps to estimate the impact of a treatment, so we need a counterfactual. It's articulated to the regression framework, so estimations have assumptions we rely on in order to tell the truth and avoid spurious results. The main idea to use difference and difference approach is to establish impact evaluations, which are derived from treatment effects. Considerations to use the difference and difference approach. The context of the analysis is non-experimental, so selection bias emerge on these kind of experiments, where areas is not randomized. When we got our randomized experiments, selection bias will not occur, but normally, uh, public programs are related to a situation where we want to change the welfare of a person or a population. So, special characteristics emerge when we're introducing a treatment or a public program effect, inducing to the selection bias problem. It tries to replicate as much as possible the randomization of a program or intervention in order to reduce the bias and spuriosity of the results. Among with propensity score matching, difference on difference approach is in the category of assuming conditional exogeneity of the intervention or the treatment. It gives internal validation of an intervention, but not exogenous validations. Usually, in impact evaluation, we require both internal validity and exogenous validation, because exogenous validation is able to tell us that if we can implement the intervention in different contexts, However, the difference and difference approach will only give internal validation since we're relying on a specific data related to certain characteristics of a population over time. Now we need to check some of the concepts in difference and difference approach in order to understand it better. The first is the impact evaluation concept. It can be defined as the measurement of changes in welfare between individuals which can be attributed to a specific program or intervention. Normally, a public program has objectives, and it has a specific context. It's motivated to change the situations in order to improve the welfare of the people. The implementation of the programs usually generates effects, and in order to establish if a program was effective or not, we need to do an empirical comparison, and we try to establish a comparison between the results and the expected results. Another important concept in difference and difference approach is the counterfactual. This concept can be tricky to understand at first, but don't worry. We can define the counterfactual as all situation which is not happening in the universe because another situation happened. You can interpret it as what other possible outcome could have happened if a series of events didn't happen. To explain this concept, we're using this draw. We don't got our little body here, right? This individual could be a population in general or just an individual. 
So we want to change his situation. We want him to have a better welfare. In this case, we're implementing a program or an intervention over individual over the individual. So one of the possible observable outcomes we got now, whether it was treated or it was non treated. And the problem that the counterfactual is that in order to establish if what was the impact of our treatment over the individual would be to find the ideal counterfactual. Ideal counterfactual would be the same individual which was non-treated when the treatment has been given. However, in reality, there's only one of the two possible ways after an intervention has been done, whether it was treated or non-treated. The problem is that this ideal counterfactual is not measurable or observable in reality, but this is the ideal. It was the same individual which was non-treated. Following ahead with the concepts of difference and difference approach, we have at first the treatment. Treatment is the intervention on someone or some populations which behaves towards some result or desired outcome. This outcome is usually relevant on one variable that we're examining. The treatment effect is the effect developed by the implementation of the decision or the program or the project in a certain outcome. So we possibly establish uh, the impact treatment effect over a certain variable. The treatment group is the group which is targeted for intervention. So right, so is this is the group we want to impact. We want to change his welfare in order to improve. And with this idea, the treatment group has certain characteristics. The control group, it's the comparison group that as we're using as a counterfactual usually, when they know that the impact evaluation is given under certain characteristics similar to the treated group. So it's basically a group which has characteristics, very characteristics similar among the treatment group, but it wasn't treated. That's the biggest difference. Now we're introducing the most of the important concepts, the average treatment effect. It is defined as the average gain in outcomes of participants relative to non-participants. So in impact evaluation, we normally use the treatment group relative to the control group. We can mathematically introduce this idea, the average treatment effect, at the, as a difference in expected results, right? So we got the expected results of the y sub a, which is the outcome for individual a, when the treatment was given, right? So we first understand uh, t, this case, as the treatment domain variable, which is between 0 and 1. When equals 1, it is telling us that the treatment has been given, and when it equals 0, it is telling us that the treatment wasn't given. So, we are analyzing first the first expected result. In this case, y sub a, with one in parentheses, indicates an outcome of individual under treatment, when the treatment was given. On the other hand, we're subtracting from that the expected outcome of the same individual which was non-treated when the treatment was given. This is the ideal proper counterfactual. However, in reality, we cannot measure this one. The equation is basically telling us that the expected outcomes in terms of means of the individual due to a treatment can be estimated by comparing the expected value when the individual is non-participant. However, as we mentioned before, this proper counterfactual is hard to find in reality or to measure. So we need to make assumptions on this in order to estimate the average treatment effect. More concepts in difference in difference approach that are important to learn. The cross-sectional. Cross-sectional is a set of data of one period of time with multiple individuals which retain certain characteristics. These certain characteristics could be understood as sex, age, years of educational, and experience years in the current job and such things. Panel data, we can say it's like a reunion or a multiple conjunction of cross-sectional data. So it's a set of data which considers multiple cross-sectional points in time. Estimator, so since we're using difference and difference approach related to regression frameworks, so we need to define the estimator. The estimator would define as the measure of impact between 
a dependent variable and an independent variable given an econometrical model. A model to introduce the concept. Consider the basic model. Y sub A equals alpha plus beta times the treatment effect on a variable plus an error term. The outcome y is a linear function of the treatment of a variable t, and when t equals 1, the individual a is participant of the treatment. If t equals 0, then it's not participant. Alpha would be interpreted as an outcome variable which doesn't depend on the treatment, and beta is the estimator which gives the treatment effect. Several problems arise when we regress the about equation in non-randomized experiments, omitted variable bias or endogeneity which violates the assumption of conditional exogenity. In randomized experiments, we could establish or regress in this model, and it would be the average treatment effect. However, in non-randomized experiments, which are usually the case in public programs, we need to establish a difference. So, we need to introduce the difference and difference model approach to evaluate the average treatment effect. We can do this by implying the next form. We got first the outcome, y sub a. The treatment domain variable which is associated with beta 1 estimator. When t equals 1, the individual a is participant to the treatment. If t equals 0, then it's non-participant. Moving along, we got a variable time, which indicates as a dummy variable the times before intervention and post-intervention. So, when this time variable equals 0, it refers to the pre-intervention stage, where areas that the treatment domain variable equals 1, it refers to the post-estimation stage. Beta 3, uh, which is associated to this interaction term between the time domain variable and the treatment effect, it's going to give us the difference and difference estimator, which is also giving us the treatment effect, the average treatment effect. So whenever we introduce this basic difference and difference model, the estimator of interest is the one associated with the interaction term. Difference and difference approach is one way to correct the problems of endogeneity if the error terms in A exist, which are related to unobservable heterogeneous effects and are so time invariant. It's important to, to note that these effects are time invariant because if we got random effects which are not time invariant, we cannot estimate this model because estimators would be inconsistent. Assumptions of the basic difference and difference model. The model equation must be correctly specified, implying that functional form is correct. The error term should be uncorrelated with other variables, which refers to conditional exogenity assumptions. As the covariance of A and the treatment effect the time domain variable and the interaction term. Basically, with ensuring this, we got a conditional exogenity assumption. Thank you for watching this. This was an MMS research hub video. My name is John Riveros, and I hope you like it.